Absolutely. Thanks for everything. To Danielle, I'll get you the article. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So I hear you were involved heavily with recruiting Jordan. Is yes. That, yeah. So, so I mean, obviously now it's a no-brainer. What was right. it? What was it back then that kind of was like, hey, this is the kid we want. To, you know, when you guys were fledgling, it's into the golf world. What was, right. What was well, it about? We were fledgling. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're, <laughs> we're new. You're new. You're we're young. You're How about young. that? There um, go. Okay. It truly it was. It was more about the way he handled things. Um, he was mature beyond his years. I felt that with his junior record uh, and then the success he had while he was uh, a junior, it's it is an individual athlete in an individual athlete sport, right? It, it's like to be, you got to be comfortable being the man. You know what I mean? Like you got to be comfortable with everyone sort of going after you. And not everybody's comfortable with that. And based on his record, and then you look away, he handled things and how people were still rooting for him, even when he was at the top of the mountain. You know, as a junior, I felt like clearly he's got a person. Like he, there's a there's a personality there. There's a, something that attracts people to him, which is a tough juxtaposition, right? To be like considered the best junior in the world, but also have people like rooting for you right. that you're competing against. And so when you sort of break all that sort of you know uh, psychology down, you know, as you sort of say, okay, clearly the talent's there. I'm not a golf guy, right? I don't. I mean, but his record proved that, right? But it's the mentality, how he looked at people, how he looked people in the eye, how he treated people, even as an amateur. You know, he looked like he belonged. He wasn't nervous at all. He would laugh and joke and talk with other tour players. Treated the caddy, looked looked fans in the eye. You know, pick up the flag stick, flag stick for his caddy. Like all those little things that just shows that he's pretty self-aware. Right. To me, is a pretty powerful, or was a pretty powerful combination. Right, you got the talent with the maturity, with a strong sense of self-awareness and purpose. Like, and you get those things sort of together, and that's sort of what it all came down to. Gotcha. So now, so now you guys have, you know, Jordan, a couple other golfers in the fold. You're, you know, you're you're getting there. People recognize mm-hmm. Under Armour on the golf course. You know, you've got shoes. You know, what what are the big challenges now going forward? Is I mean, because golf's kind of a traditional sport, yep. right? I mean, there's just a lot of traditions. Even when Nike was trying to get into the sport, it wasn't easy, right? right. They were they were an established company sure. at that point. Sure. So, yeah. So what are the big challenges right now for Under Armour trying to get into the golf game and really establish themselves? We well, you know I think. I think, you know, what we're doing right now is sticking to the apparel and adding footwear, so we're sticking to what we know okay. and what I think our consumer knows us, right? I think athletes know that we're a very strong apparel and footwear brand. And so as long as we stick to those two areas, and really, like, you know, Kevin started the company with a compression guy t-shirt, and he sold that same style for five years until people really knew, knew Under Armour about one thing and one great thing. And we can sort of do the same thing with golf, right? That same idea, like stick to apparel, stick to footwear, really get known for those two areas, and then see where it takes us from expanding a product portfolio. But right now, I think that it's more and more the same. It's continue to put great product out there and, and let the consumer get to know us and get to trust us. And once they trust us, then they, then you have that trust, and we, we don't violate that trust. This, consumers know what we stand for, and that's, that's a powerful thing to be able to go forward with. So something like golf equipment down the line would not be out of the question. I wouldn't say it's out of the question, but it's not anytime soon. Right. It's okay. it's one of those things where again, I think we're very happy with where our product portfolio is right now. So what would you say is going well right now for Under Armour Golf? You know, as far as you know, again, getting out there and you know, getting that brand recognition, yeah. getting out there and establish yourself in that kind of that that golf echelon that's kind of hard to break into. What's what's going well so far? Well, I think I mean our apparel's really doing well on a lot of good channels. Uh, I think the young golfer, I think what's happened a lot also is that that kid who maybe first knew us at 15 or 16 when they were playing high school sports, you know, now you go forward 10, 12 years, you know, now they're out of college and they're starting a career, but they still know our brand. So they're very comfortable in taking our brand and wearing it on the golf course. Um, but, they're, yeah, they're, from a retail perspective, we're, we're, things are really strong in all channels. Greengrass is strong, golf specialty is strong. We're strong at Dick's and the big box stores uh, here in North America. We're growing rapidly internationally. We're, we've got huge business over in the U.K. at Greengrass uh, and specialty there. So we feel like we're starting to reach that authentic golf consumer okay. uh, based on those you know returns from the different channels. So for us, it's more and more the same. Just keep... You know, just keep keep that North Star out there being an authentic golf brand. When we first started golf and, and I got the team together, one of the things we knew our challenge was going to be was like, how do you turn a sporting goods brand into a golf brand? Right. Right, and they're two different things, right? And, and the golf consumer, you said, the golf consumer can be it's very, they, they know, they smell a rat. Right. Right, and so for us, it's like, hey, we got to, Talk like a golf brand. We got to act like a golf brand. We got to behave like a golf brand, you know. And, and we got to build products like a golf brand for us to really, to, for us to really uh, compete. And, we, and we'll see that once we see the sales, 
in specialty and greengrass. We'll know that, and we've seen that, so we feel like we're really making headway. Are there any like you know trends in consumer buying right now with these type of products that you guys have noticed that you're trying to take advantage of? Is there anything like that, or no? I think quite frankly, I think the performance apparel and the performance, okay. the performance product is really. That's been a trend, right? All the other brands have come along with us. Right. So, uh, for our perspective, as long as we continue to do those things, like we can continue to stay ahead of the curve on the apparel side. So, uh, one more question. Uh, yeah. I guess two more questions, real yeah. quick. So, the one thing that you notice about Under Armour is, um, you know, if you compare to like Nike and Puma trying to break into the golf world, also they they went out they went out and did things crazy, you know, lots of wild mm-hmm. colors, right. and they're still doing it. And you don't really see that with Under Armour. You guys, but you guys still kind of stand out, but you're kind of a little bit more conservative. Yeah. Um, is that kind of by design? Are you yeah. trying? You know, what kind of? You know, what, what's the thinking behind trying to go with the, that? You know, that sort of like product line as opposed to the more wild stuff that Nike and Puma does. Listen, quite frankly, we want to make stuff that people will wear. Makes sense. And the more people will wear that, so. If you were to look in your closet at all the golf shirts, and you had, say you had 15 golf shirts out there, you'd probably see 12 of them or probably some version of blue, black, gray, and white. And maybe they got a stripe or this, that, but it's probably blue, black, gray, and white. Yeah. And then you may have a, a red one, maybe a green one, you know, maybe a purple one, you know, or whatever it may be. But basically, it's blue, black, gray, and white. Yes. So we base it in that stuff because that's what we feel the consumer wears. And then if you can have it fit great and perform real well, now all of a sudden you got something that's comfortable with the design and the color scheme. And now all of a sudden it performs great and fits great. You got a pretty good cocktail. So that's what we try to stick to. Uh, I think we know what we are as a, as a company. You know, performance for us is, is uh, paramount. And then fit. And then have impactful branding. And then have that technology in the fabric. And if we can get those four things in our product, we, we feel real good about our, our chances for success. Very good. So one last minute. So I asked you what's going well and what you guys are moving forward with. What, what's, what's the struggle right now for Under Armour? In golf? Yeah, in golf in particular. You know, what, what's... You know, what are you guys? What are you guys having a hard time with that you're trying to overcome? Would you say? Is there anything you can think of? Not really. No. no. Things are going that well. We're doing okay. Good. Yeah. I mean, it's. I'm sure there are, and it probably sounds bad to say, <laughs> you know, but like. I mean, we can always be better at you know, our product. We can always be better at our footwear. We know that. We know we, we don't have made, we've yet to make our greatest products. You know, so we know we got we got we got still a lot of work to do in that area. But um, you know, business is good for us. So we continue to keep our head down, and stay stay humble in our success, and continue to try to push forward. You know, in our own way, and stay true to what our brand is, and be authentic to our brand. Like. As long as we do that, we'll be okay. Gotcha. So one more quick one on Jordan. Yeah. So when you were recruiting him mm-hmm. and you were part of that process, was there an aha moment either from you or with Kevin Plank or with Jordan himself where, you know, this you know, this is going to get done, he's going to be part of our, you know, was, was there something that really kind of put the whole thing over the top and you guys realized that we were going to go forward and this, you know, Jordan was going to be our guy? You know, he came to visit with his dad uh, before he turned pro and, and, and when we really got to spend time with him at our campus. Um, and you saw how he behaved again around people he didn't know. You know, and Kevin walks in the room, and Kevin's got a tremendous presence yes. about him. And, you know, it was, he was very comfortable in that. You know, he sort of said, okay, I mean, at the point in time, he was an 18 year old kid. Right. You know, it's a different, it's a different place than he is now. Uh, how he handled that, he sort of go, wow, that's pretty good. You know, and if he can handle that, you know, you feel like he can handle a lot of things. So I think after that, when Kevin got to spend some time with him and he and I talked, it was, we were both pretty convinced that this was our guy. Nice. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate Thanks so much. Thanks for the time. Appreciate you got it. Thanks for coming.